Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I have another favorites video for you guys, and it's on products for treating hyperpigmentation. Hi, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board-certified dermatologist, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you enjoy learning more about hair and skin-related content, consider subscribing, and I would love it if you can give this video a thumbs up. So per request, this video is really my favorite products of 2022 for treating hyperpigmentation. Now, by the time this comes out, it's already 2023, but hey, I figure better than never. Now, before we jump into my favorite products, I want to just mention a few things on treating hyperpigmentation. Number one, you got to address the underlying cause. Otherwise, your treatment endeavors are just pointless. There are many causes of hyperpigmentation, most commonly acne, photoaging, melasma, or eczema. You really need to tackle the underlying cause first to treat the root of the problem before you can effectively treat the discoloration. Otherwise, you're just constantly chasing after discoloration. Two, when it comes to treating a lot of these conditions, commonly acne or eczema, part of your treatment will naturally help improve hyperpigmentation. For example, a major part of treating acne is using a topical prescription retinoid or adapalene, and those are very effective products at treating post-acne marks. Similarly, a topical anti-inflammatory cream or steroid to help with the eczema actually will help with PIH as well. Now, when it comes to melasma, this is tricky because often melasma can just develop on its own, often maybe due to pregnancy or birth control pills or hormonal therapy. Now, if you have noticed new onset of melasma occurring after starting a hormonal treatment, this is the time that you may want to talk with your provider and changing that treatment if it's possible. It's really important to distinguish between post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or pigmentation versus post inflammatory erythema or redness. There is nuances into what is best for treating the two. A lot of the treatments for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation can be helpful for redness, but the redness is really best treated with laser devices, light devices that are operated by your provider or dermatologist. So if you have redness, using hyperpigmentation products may not be the best way to address that concern. The next tip is when it comes to picking skincare products, go with formula that have multiple ingredients that work together to fight hyperpigmentation over one ingredient alone. One question I always get asked is what is the best ingredient in fighting hyperpigmentation? And I feel like that's a very loaded question because it's really hard to predict what is best because best in my mind is one that's going to be effective, but effective for you. I cannot predict what is going to work well for your skin because working well not only means that it works to remove pigment, but it's also going to be less irritating and something that you can use more consistently. So you just have to know your skin and know what's going to work well for you. Another concept to understand when it comes to treating hyperpigmentation is that depth of pigment within your skin. So when you look at your skin, you have that top layer, the epidermis, the dermis, the middle layer, and then the fat. And obviously pigment that's superficial is easier to treat than pigment that's deeper. Which brings to my point number four, that is if you have deeper pigment, often it's going to respond the best to a combination of topical therapy and in-office procedures. It's very common for me to see my skin of color patients that come in with hyperpigmentation from you know, severe eczema or acne, and that pigment is very deep. And we can often do certain tests using a special lamp called a Woods lamp to kind of help us get a sense of where that pigment is. And often these patients will complain, I've used treatments for such a long time, creams and what have you, and it's not improving. And that is because when the pigment is deeper, it's really hard for the creams to go that deep to effectively remove the pigment and devices and cosmetic procedures are going to be more effective in doing that. So this is where seeing a dermatologist who specializes in treating your skin tone and your skin concerns are going to be the key and essential in helping you along your journey in treating your hyperpigmentation. Tip number five, you need to be consistent and you need to be patient. Treating hyperpigmentation takes time. This process, this treatment is a marathon not a sprint. Think about how fast your skin turns over, 28 to 30 days, sometimes even longer. And so it's going to take multiple cycles for that pigment to fully be removed. So I would 
say with treating hyperpigmentation, if you're solely relying on creams and skincare products, you got to give it at least three to six months. And the last tip I have is don't forget sunscreen. We are so fixated on the active ingredients, the products, but we forget the biggest culprit and biggest drive of hyperpigmentation, which is the sun and the environment. And if your skin of color, visible light from the sun plays a huge role as well. In fact, studies have shown that by just wearing sunscreen alone can improve the discoloration of melasma. So you can spend all this money applying products, but if you neglect sunscreen, even for a little bit, even for a day, that hyperpigmentation can sometimes come back with a vengeance. So you really need to be first and foremost diligent with sunscreen and photo protection. Now, enough said, let's get into my favorite products. So the first product is SkinCeuticals Discoloration Defense. And this is the most expensive product I'll be talking about today. This sits around a little bit over $100, but it is so worth every dollar. I certainly have used this product prior to 2022, but this year with all the acne and post acne marks I've been getting, I kind of discovered it and forgot how effective and how well it worked for my skin. It's reliable. Every time I use it, I will notice the discoloration fading within a couple weeks, fading, but not completely gone. This formulation contains 3% tranexamic acid, 1% kojic acid, 5% niacinamide, and then a patented exfoliating ingredient from L'Oreal. This product actually has been published in clinical studies to be helpful in treating hyperpigmentation and melasma. Consistency wise, it's got a little bit a darker color compared to the C Ferulic, but very much reminds me of the texture of the C Ferulic serum. And you can use this twice a day and you can combine it in the morning after your vitamin C or at night before your topical retinoid. I personally like to spot treat, but certainly if you have larger areas of discoloration and even skin tone, you can apply four to five drops and put it all over your face. It's fairly gentle. I personally never had a reaction or became irritated from it. If you're looking for another treatment serum that has a similar formulation to the discoloration defense, but with a slight tweak, then I recommend checking out La Roche-Posay's Glycolic B5. This serum contains 10% glycolic acid, tranexamic acid, kojic acid, vitamin B5, and lipohydroxy acid, which is a gentle exfoliating acid. If you're someone that struggles from an even skin tone, mostly due to excessive sun damage, photo aging, so a lot of dark spots from that, but also struggle with fine lines and wrinkles, this can be a great one to use. That 10% glycolic acid, in addition to the other ingredients I mentioned, is going to help with that uneven skin tone, but also will help with exfoliation, removing dullness, and over time to improve that uneven skin texture, as well as fine lines and wrinkles that comes with extensive sun damage and mature skin. If you use a topical retinol, what I recommend how to use this is to use it once or twice a week at night and place place of your topical retinoid. So that skin cycling trend that people have been talking about. So you would use your retinol maybe three to four times a week at night, and then use this one to two times a week in place of your topical retinol. Texture wise, this serum is slightly more sticky, less liquidy than the discoloration defense. But once you apply it and let it absorb, it's not extra tacky or sticky. I think it's overall better suited for more mature and dry skin. The next product is CeraVe's Research surfacing retinol. Now I have a whole video dedicated to reviewing this product. So feel free to check that one out if you want to learn more in detail. But why I picked this product as another favorite of 2022 is because it's super gentle. It works really well in improving post acne marks because it not only contains the retinol, which we know helps with uneven skin tone, but also contains licorice root that also is anti-inflammatory, but can help with skin brightening. So this is a great product for many reasons. Number one, if you're looking for a retinol to help with anti-aging concerns, but also, you know, maybe post acne marks. So it can really dual as a retinol for various reasons. And with that licorice shoot, as I mentioned, it not only offers anti-inflammatory effects, but gives you additional boost to your retinol and helping with hyperpigmentation. Next product is from Urban Skin RX and it's their advanced even tone day and night treatment. This product contains 5% niacinamide, 3% tranexamic acid, 2% kojic acid, and 1% bakuchiol. This made it on my list because I really love the texture of this product. It has a nice creamy serum. When you put it on, it spreads very nicely. It absorbs fairly quickly without giving off a tacky or sticky feel. You can use this twice daily. It's more hydrating and less runny in nature because not everyone wants 
to use a liquid serum. So I find this one is a great one if for some reason you can't tolerate retinol. It's got that Bucuchiol in there, which is a retinoid alternative. Or if you're just looking for a product that's going to be more hydrating, less irritating, something that you can use twice a day that layers nicely under, you know, moisturizer and sunscreen. The next product is from Cetaphil from their Gentle Clear line, and it's the Mattifying Acne Moisturizer. The reason I picked this one is for my oily and acne prone friends who are looking for a product that can improve acne while treating their post acne marks because that can just be as frustrating. The last thing you want when you are treating acne and post acne marks at the same time is adding on additional ingredients that can you know impair your skin barrier health. You know, for the most part, acne treatments are already pretty irritating, right? Benzoyl peroxide and adapalene or prescription retinoids. So in this product, it's a moisturizer, but also contains ingredients that will help with controlling acne and help improve post acne marks. This is a lightweight moisturizer that contains 0.5% salicylic acid along with zinc gluconate that's also anti-inflammatory together will help impart some acne control as well as sebum control. It also contains licorice root and kojic acid that's going to help with the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Additionally, it also contains squalane, hyaluronic acid, and allantoin that's going to soothe and care for your skin barrier. It's a lightweight moisturizer that's fragrance-free but imparts a mattifying effect so great to use in the morning in the evening as well but something that I personally loved using in the morning under my sunscreen so the last product I want to mention is a vitamin C serum and I actually talked about this in my favorite vitamin C serum video a while back and it is from glow recipe their guava vitamin C dark spot treatment serum this made it on my list because it duals as an antioxidant serum and treatment for hyperpigmentation this serum contains five different types of vitamin C including the potent tetrahexyl ascorbate THD ascorbate that acts as a great antioxidant along with four different types of vitamin C to work synergistically to fight hyperpigmentation. It also contains vitamin E as well as ferulic acid, additional antioxidants to protect your skin, but also contains tranexamic acid, additional ingredient to fight hyperpigmentation. I also love it because it's got this nice creamy hydrating texture. Great if you have dry sensitive skin and literally something that you can easily just incorporate into your routine if you're already using a vitamin C serum. You can literally use this to replace your vitamin C serum and dark spot treatment in one. So I find that it's super easy to use and you don't have to add additional products into your routine to fight the uneven skin tone. So if you are someone who would like to simplify your routine, highly recommend checking this one out. Now lastly, I can't finish off a hyperpigmentation video without talking about sunscreen. But then again, I feel like sunscreen almost deserves a video on its own. And I have certainly done quite a few of my favorite sunscreens in the past. So please check that out if you're looking for sunscreen recommendations. However, what I will say is it is very important to be not only wearing sunscreen every single day, but also reapplying. And two, if you are of darker skin tone, as I mentioned earlier, visible light plays a huge role in persisting hyperpigmentation. So here you need to look for filters that block visible light. And in the US, that's going to be pretty much tinted sunscreens. There are a few European sunscreens that have non-tinted visible light filters, but currently none exist in the US. But I do want to give a shout out to two fairly affordable tinted sunscreens and drugstores that I really have been enjoying lately. The first is from Bliss, their Blockstar Visible Daily Sunscreen. Mineral sunscreen has a nice tint that blends in fairly well with most skin tones. It's very hydrating, but not greasy, non-shiny, and it's a great one to use if you are looking for something that is mineral, that is tinted, that's not drying or look ashy on your skin. I almost feel like this in some ways kind of is a dupe of the Alta MD UV Daily Tinted. Not quite the same. I find it to be maybe slightly more hydrating, creamier, but it kind of reminds me of that consistency. Similarly, the other one that I really have been loving is from Verse, their Guards Up Daily Mineral Sunscreen that also has a nice light tint that is very hydrating. It's mineral based, absorbs pretty quickly. The tint on here is slightly lighter in color compared to the Bliss, but nevertheless, I feel both can work fairly well on most skin tones once it's absorbed. All right, guys, so that is my favorite products of 2022 for hyperpigmentation. Do any of your favorites make it on the list? Or if you have tried one that has worked really well that's not mentioned, please let me know in the comments below because I would really want to try it myself. Again, if there are other favorites that you want me to talk about, leave them in the comments below. I always read you guys' comments. It gives me ideas and inspiration for my next video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and 
and please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.